Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever and whenever you may be watching this video, and welcome to another Emiran Plays. And today I want to have a look at something at, at something else I've been enjoying uh, recently, which is the Magic the Gathering Arena beta. So yes, this game is in beta, but from my play experience it's extremely polished, so I've got no problems at all putting it up on the screen. Uh, Magic the Gathering Arena is intended to be the new digital starting point for people to come into Magic the Gathering. And it's also intended to be the new home for uh, tournament play in the standard format. So standard format is, if we just have a quick look here, these sets here. It's the core set 2019, Guilds of Ravnica, Dominaria, Rivals of Ixalan, Ixalan and I believe one more set will be launched uh, shortly and these will rotate in and out as time goes by um, so it's the standard play set the existing Magic the Gathering online client uh, will remain the home for people who want to play with older cards and it will still be the home for uh, tournament formats that support the older cards like Legacy and Extended um, they, those historical cards are not intended to come to Magic the Gathering Arena um, because of the custom animations that they're putting in for the cards. It'll be pretty easy to see that it'll just take way too long to add animations to all of the cards for Magic the Gathering's uh, library. You just end up reusing a lot of them and they wouldn't be as special. So uh, the Magic the Gathering Arena is only intended to be uh, the most current standard playset. Um, so when you create a new account, you'll get dropped into a tutorial and the story goes that you've barely survived a battle with some unknown opponent and you've been found by a helpful guardian spirit and they walk you through five uh, tutorial battles which help you to get to, to grips with uh, the interface here, specifically in Arena and some of the game mechanics uh, if you are a, an extremely new player it walks you through uh, flying, uh, haste, um, a few other things like that that are card specific and then just the basics of how the turn works, how the order works, uh, tapping, uh, attacking, all of those things like that. Uh, and it cu culminates in a battle against the Elder Dragon, Nicole Bolas. So for uh, players who have been around for a while, that's a bit of a treat that you get to see uh, a, quite a famous uh, historical card come to life. Over the course of the five tutorials, uh, you accumulate six or seven common and uncommon cards. And at the end of the tutorial set, when you defeat Nicol Bolas, you also get given uh, five pre-made decks. So these are the pre-made decks that you can just go out and buy physically in a store as well. Um, one for each of the core uh, mana types and then when you, you'll get dropped onto this home screen here uh, and these uh, different play styles on the side are locked so it gives you a further three challenges uh, one to play one game one to cast five lands and one to deal 10 damage and once you've completed those tasks off it literally takes you three games to do it it unlocks these additional play types on the side. So a constructed event, a draft with the core set and a single turn, and these do rotate. So you also get drafts for the individual sets. Constructed events are always there, but these other ones, you get pauper sometimes, they just rotate. Uh, Wizards of the Coast is testing it out because it is a beta. Um, what I will say, uh, I have another account that I've been playing on, but I decided to start a new one uh, just for the purpose of these videos. And when you arrive for the first time, there is a one-time offer here, a welcome bundle, um, which gives five core set uh, packs and 2,500 gems. Now the gems can be used uh, to enter these events here. Some require gems, some you can use gold or gems. Um, and you'll have these quests along the bottom here. So 
These are daily quests, so cast 20 blue or black spells for some gold. Uh, that's a daily quest as well, cast blue or green. This one here is a daily, but that one keeps ticking up. So you achieve the first step, it'll give you another step, achieve the next one, it'll keep going. This one here is your weekly, so it'll give you a pack for every five wins, up to 15 wins for the week. And on a new account, um, it'll daily give you a new uh, play set, one of these pre-made boxes. I think after five or six days, it then just gives you the rest. So you end up with about 15 pre-made box sets, just if you keep coming in and playing games. So they keep accumulating down there. And then obviously you can use the gold to purchase packs. So a thousand gold for a pack. So these ones are a thousand gold thousand gold or you can use gems and I found that you if you just play a few games here and there you really do accumulate enough gold that you can keep purchasing booster packs at a pretty good rate it certainly doesn't feel like you have to uh, deposit any money to be to be getting any cards um, but I think this pack here is a really good value I did it on my other account and I'm just going to pick one up here as well um, just to give the collection a little bit of a boost. So I'm just going to do that now Okay, here we are. So we've got the 2500 gems and the five core set boosters So we'll claim those there is also a <clears throat> Redemption code that's available for everybody uh, to give you three Ravnica booster sets. So that's play Ravnica And it gives you three of the new Ravnica boosters as well. That's available for everybody. I don't know how long it'll last, <clears throat> um, but everybody can access that. So claim those as well. Let's open some packs. This is still, uh, it does, I don't think it matters how old you get. This is still one of the, the best things uh, that you can experience. If you're into the collectible card game genre at all. So that's going to open a core set here. Vampire Neonate, 0-3, each opponent loses one life when you gain one life. Naturalize, there's a card that's been around for a long time. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Invoke the Divine, destroy target artifact or enchantment, you gain four life. Aviation Pioneer, when Aviation Pioneer enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one colorless stop to artifact creature token with flying. Okay. Sovereign's Bite, target player loses three life, you gain three life. So that's the commons at the bottom there. Uncommon, mirror image. You may have mirror image enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature you control. That's pretty cool. Druid of Horns. <clears throat> Whenever you cast an aura spell that targets Druid of Horns, create a 3-3 three, three green beast token creature. And the rare, let's see what we get. Mentor of the Meek. Whenever another creature with power two or less enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay one colorless. If you do, draw a card. So that's obviously something for a white weenie deck. Now what's happening up here in the top right hand corner is one of the best things, or one of the best features I think, of uh, Magic the Gathering Arena, and that's the wild card system. So what's happening here is these base cards that just have the silver or gold or orange they can be traded in for any card of that rarity so here that's an uncommon wild card once you acquire one of those you can create any uncommon card you like using that wild card so that really takes the place of the dusting system that's pretty prevalent in this sort of genre which means you can destroy a card and it'll give you some alternate currency, which then once you have enough, you can use it to purchase any card you like. The problem with that is it's never one for one. So you destroy a card, it never gives you enough alternate currency, which is often referred to as dust, hence the dusting system, to just go and purchase the card you want. Depending on which game you're playing, it might take you destroying five cards, seven cards, 10 cards, 15 cards, before you can, you then have enough currency to go and create the card you want to. Whereas with this system here, 
uh, you accumulate these wild cards. It's ticking up here. It's going to give me some for opening packs. So one more pack until I get another uncommon wild card. And then over here, four more packs until I get a rare wild card. 16 more packs until I get a mythic wild card. But you can also pull them out of packs. So you can straight pull a uncommon, rare or mythic wild card when you open your booster packs. So for me, uh, I think it's a really great system. I think it's much better than dusting. Um, and if you look up here, this gives you a rundown of what you've accumulated. So obviously it's given me some to start. I've got eight common, four uncommon, two rare, or one mythic rare wild card as it is. So what I would do uh, is just come over here to decks and then down the bottom here, click on collection. And these are my wild cards here. And what I can do is I can open up the library, find any card I might like. Let's look for some sort of rare. So that open the graves, that's a rare there. I, it's, I could create one of those right now with a rare wild card. Um, I'm not going to do that, but that's how you do it. I've certainly used it on my previous account uh, to create uh, planeswalkers with mythic ones because they're something that really takes a lot of decks to the next level. And, you know, while it's great to open a booster pack and get that excitement of pulling one out of a pack, uh, sometimes you can't just rely on the RNG. So uh, you just want to go and create one. So I think that's a really great system. I really enjoyed that uh, in Magic the Gathering Arena. So we'll pop this one here. <clears throat> and see, I just opened another pack, which took me over the threshold uh, to get another uncommon wild card. And now it's another six packs. And it, it might seem like it's going to take you a long time to accumulate those, but I found just with even semi-regular playing, um, and with the weekly and daily quest rewards that they give you, given that a lot of the draft uh, events will give you packs back as a prize, you really do start to churn through those wild cards pretty quickly. Uh, again, I never felt like a, I needed to go to the store and spend real life money uh, to get ahead. Salvager of Secrets. When Salvager of Secrets enters the battlefield, return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. Titanic Growth, there we go. Uh, target creature gets plus four, plus four until the end of the turn. I mean, Giant Growth was a staple for many years, and that's just a little bit better, a little bit more costly. Act of Treason. Gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature. It gains haste until end of the turn. Okay, that's handy. Strangling Spores, target creature gets minus three, minus three until the end of the turn. Greenwood Sentinel, two, two Vigilance for two mana. That's quite good. Uncommon, Ajani's Pride Mate. Whenever you gain life, you may put a plus one, plus one counter on Ajani's Pride Mate as a white, which obviously is going to feature quite a bit of life gain. That's a good card. Uncommon, Skilled Animator. When skilled animator enters the battlefield, target artifact you control becomes an artifact creature with base power and toughness, five and five for as long as skilled animator remains on the battlefield. Okay, let's see what rare we get here. Thorn Lieutenant. Whenever Thorn Lieutenant becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, create a one one green elf warrior creature token. Pay five and one. Thorn Lieutenant gets plus one, plus four, uh, plus four, plus four until end of the turn. Okay. Not seen that one before. Let's pop another one. Anticipate. Look at the top three cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Plummet. Destroy target creature with flying. That's fairly self-explanatory. Luminous Bonds, Enchant Creature. Enchanted Creature can't attack or block. Monolith, it's an artifact. Add one mana of any color. Okay. Take Vengeance, destroy target tap creature. We seem to be getting quite a bit for white. Murder, uh, destroy target creature. Yep, pretty standard for black. There's an uncommon. Uh, Horizon Scholar. Flying, when Horizon Scholar enters the battlefield, scry two. 
So scry is look at the card, top card in the library and decide whether you want to put it back on the top or on the bottom. Let's see what rare we get. Alpine Moon Enchantment. As Alpine Moon enters the battlefield, choose a non-basic land card name. Lands your opponent's control with the chosen name lose all land types and abilities and they gain add one mana of any color. So non-basic, so what would be the purpose of that? I'm guessing there's some, I mean, it stops dual lands from giving both sorts of mana. And I'm assuming there's some rare lands that probably have additional abilities that that would get rid of. Seems quite uh, specific. So maybe that's something that you sideboard against uh, certain types of decks. Not too sure. Pop another one. And there you go. That's what I was actually waiting for. So just in the pack, there's a common wild card there that'll go straight into the collection and we can turn that into any uh, common card we might like, which early on in the collection, uh, obviously when you don't have a full catalog of all the available cards, they're really, really handy when you want to go and build or try specific decks. Cavalry Drill Master. When Cavalry Drill Master enters the battlefield, target creature gets plus two, plus zero and gains first strike and still the end of turn. Hide Blade, three, two, it's got flash, which means you can play at any time. You could play an instant. Abnormal Endurance, until end of turn, target creature gets plus two, plus zero and gains. When this creature dies, return it to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control. Druid of the Cow, it's one, three, add one green mana. So it's a Llanowar Elf, but a one, three instead, and a little bit more expensive uncommon sift draw three cards then discard a card yep so card advantage that's pretty standard for blue reclamation sage when reclamation sage enters the battlefield you may destroy target artifact or enchantment and we got a phylactery light or lich it's indestructible as a phylactery enters the battlefield, put a phylactery counter on an artifact you control. When you control no permanents with phylactery counters on them, sacrifice phylactery lunch. So for three black mana for a five five, that's quite cheap, but obviously you're having to put a counter on one of your artifacts. And if your opponent removes that artifact, then you also remove the creature. So it's cheap, it's strong, uh, but there's a couple of different ways you can get rid of it. So. Not a bad card. And there we go. We've got an uncommon wild card up there. And we just went past the threshold for gaining a new rare wild card as well. Strangling Spores again. Minus three, minus three. Abnormal Endurance again. Crash through. Creatures you control gain trample until end of turn and draw a card. Not for one mana, that's quite nice. Duress, target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-creature, non-land card from it. That player discards that card. Havoc Devils, 4-3 Trample. Gravedigger, this is a, a reappearance of an older card. When Gravedigger enters the battlefield, you may return target creature card from your graveyard to your hands. The wild card. Cleansing Nova, choose one. Destroy your creatures or destroy all artifacts and enchantments. So that's a board reset for white. That's gonna come in pretty handy, I would have thought. And now the Ravnica boosters. Wild Ceratok, a 4-3 Rhino. Muse Drake, flying. When Muse Drake enters the battlefield, draw a card. A Hired Poisoner, a 1-1 one, one Assassin with Death Touch. Candlelight Vigil, Enchant Creature. Enchanted Creature gets plus three, plus two, and has Vigilance, which means they don't tap to attack. Golgari Guildgate, that's a dual land for black green. Uncommon Smelt Ward Minotaur. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, target creature and opponent controls can't block this turn. Uncommon Guild Summits. 
When guild summer enters the battlefield, you may tap any number of untapped gates you control. Draw a card for each gate tapped this way. Whenever a gate enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. So that dual land there actually has land gate. So that's what that card's talking about. Oh, a mythic. Doom Whisperer. Flying, Trample, Pay 2 Life, Surveil 2. So again, that's look at the top card of your library and decide whether you want it to go to the top or the bottom of your... No, actually, it's not. I tell a lie. Look at the top two cards of your library, put them, put any number of them into your graveyard and the rest on top of your library in any order. So that's a bit better because obviously there are going to be decks that... Uh, work around putting things to the graveyard and then using cards to pull them back out for a cheaper casting cost so that's even better so I've made a mistake there but a mythic 6-6 six, six flying trample doom whisperer very nice again there's a common wild card collar the culprit destroy target creature with toughness 4 or greater Radical idea, draw a card, jumpstart. So jumpstart means you may cast this card from your graveyard by discarding a card in addition to paying its other costs. Then exile this card. So when you cast it the first time, it will actually stay visible uh, next to your hand to remind you that you have the opportunity to cast it again. It just means that in addition to the one blue, one colorless, you also need to discard a card to cast it the second time. Vidalcan Mesmer Mesmerist. Whenever Vidalcan Mesmerist attacks, target creature and opponent controls get minus two, minus zero until end of the turn. Goblin Locksmith. Whenever Goblin Locksmith attacks, creatures with Defender can't block this turn, so that's walls. Uncommon Beacon Bolt. Beacon Bolt deals damage to target creature equal to the total number of instant and sorcery cards you own in exile and in your graveyard. And jump start so it can be recast again. Deals damage to a target creature equal to the number of instant and sorcery cards you own in exile and in your graveyard. So that's going to be in a deck that's casting a lot of quick instant and sorcery spells and probably also has some surveil in it as well and has put some instant and sorcery cards into its graveyard uh, to boost up damage spells like that. Ledev Champion, uncommon. Whenever Ledev Champion attacks, you may tap any number of untapped creatures you control. Ledev Champion gets plus one, plus one until end of the turn for each creature tapped this way. Pay three colorless, one green, one white. Create a white soldier token with lifelink. Ooh, and another mythic. Lazav the Multifarious. So just two mana, just one blue, one black. When Lazav the Multifarious enters the battlefield, surveil one, pay X. Lazav becomes a copy of target creature card in your graveyard with converted mana cost of X. Except its name is Lazav the Multifarious. It is legendary in addition to its other types and it has this ability. Okay, so legendary means you can only have one on the board at any given time. So you're going to pay X. Let's just say there's a, you've discarded a creature that's six converted mana cost. It's a big creature. You're going to pay six colorless mana. You're going to pull that out of your graveyard. Except its name is Lazar the Multifarious. It's legendary and it has the same ability. Interesting. I'm sure there are some very tech ways to manipulate that. That's a card that you're really going to have to play around with a bit to get that to work in a deck. But that's an interesting card, that one. <clears throat> Last pack. Notion Rain. Surveil 2, then draw 2 cards. Notion Rain deals 2 damage to you. A little bit of card advantage there. Call of the Culprit again. Generous Stray. <laughs> when Generous Stray enters the battlefield, draw a card. That's an interesting artwork. Uh, Torch Courier. 1-1 one, one Haste. Sacrifice Torch Courier. Another target creature gains haste until end of the turn. 
an uncommon enhanced surveillance. You may look at an additional two cards each time you surveil. Exile it. Shuffle your graveyard into your library. Some more deck manipulation for blue. District Guide, uncommon. When District Guide enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card or gate card. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. And we got Omni Spell Adept, a human wizard. You pay two and one blue, tap it. You may cast an instant or sorcery card from your hand without paying its mana cost. Okay, so a 3-4 creature that you can cast really big instant or sorcery spells for far cheaper than its mana cost. So, yep, I can see that being played for sure. All right, so that, we just opened eight boosters there. What I'm gonna do is just play one single game uh, just to finish this video off, just to show off some of the visuals. So we'll just play with this, just a, one of those pre-made decks, just a standard game. <coughs> I found that it has no um, troubles finding you an opponent. It rarely even gets to 10, 10 seconds in the queue before it finds somebody for you to play, which is good. I think the game volume might be a little high. I'll tone that down for next time. So I've got two lands, an instant to give it a uh, blocking or blocked creature a boost, destroy tap creature, a 3-2 creature, uh, we can shackle a creature, can't make it not attack a um, block, and a fourth is not the best starting hand, uh, but we'll just we'll go with it anyway. So visually, it's very much in the Hearthstone style, where uh, cards will fly across the map uh, as they deal damage. I think Hearthstone's really um, set that graphical style as the standard now for this genre, but. I found everything to be smooth, very little lag. Uh, all the cards interact with each other really well. I haven't found any glitches in the rules. Um, everything uh, does what it's supposed to do. So we'll play another land. Oh. One or the other. I'm going to double click here just because. All right, clearly playing against red white. Ah, oh, we pulled that card. Mentor of the Meek. So whenever another creature with power two or less enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay one and draw a card. So we might be playing against a, a white weenie deck here. Uh, and we'll play the... We don't really want to stop it from attacking or blocking because that's not what the strength of the card is. The strength of that card is its ability, not the fact that it's 2-2. Two, two. So we'll save that for something else. And you can hear the, the audio there as that card came in. There's a lot of nice audio and graphical features. This um, sort of ripple effect is summoning sickness. It's telling me that I can't attack without this turn because uh, it's just been played. So that's uh, a little effect. And I mean, even on the backgrounds, you will see a little scarab beetle sort of make its way up the left here and the braziers all all work and the waterfalls flowing in the background. I found it to be yeah really really quite a good um, graphical engine for it. It really adds to the to the gameplay. Obviously the number one advantage of playing online is the ability to find an opponent um, you know pretty much instantly as opposed to playing a physical game where you have to find friends or go to your local game shop. So, Paladin of the Bloodstained, when Paladin of the Bloodstained enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one vampire with lifelink. So that little heart symbol there is lifelink. So it deals damage dealt by the creature. Um, you gain that much life. So we can see what they're trying to do. They're trying to build up a, a weenie army. He would have got to draw a card. No, because he tapped out to do that, so. Play another mana. What do we want to do? I think... 3-2 early game. What do we just put this out? This is a good card, this. Lean and War Lena. Whenever it attacks, create two 1-1 cat creature tokens with lifelink that are tapped and attacking. Um, I might just do this for now. 
Just to see if he's got any removal. I want to try and probably draw out any removal before I play that one, because that's quite a strong card. Flying, whenever Herald of Faith attacks, you gain four life. I'll play that one next. If he's got any removal, he'll probably drop it on that. And then we can play the War Leader. So along the bottom here, it tells you what step we're in. So it's his turn and his first main step. And it'll flick over. Oh, goodness. What is going on here? So what was that? Create two one one white soldier creature tokens until end of a turn. Creatures you control get plus one plus one gain a haste. And he paid a mana, drew a card for that one as well. Interesting. But it's only for this turn, so two two. I'm just going to take that. So they all dropped back again now. And I don't want to destroy target tap creature because they're just tokens. We don't want to destroy those. That's not good value for that card. So I'm going to play the Herald of Faith. And then I'll just... Uh, that can't attack or block. They're tapped out. He's not going to block with that. And it, it'll kill that, so I might as well, might as well go for an attack. All right, he took it. Cool. Certainly, neither of us is having any mana troubles. Captivating crew, four three pirate, can pay four. Gain control of target creature and opponent controls until end of the turn. Untap that creature against haste until end of the turn. Activate this ability only any time you cast a sorcery. So it's going to take control of one of my creatures. That is slightly problematic. So I don't want to play the war leader. He's probably going to take control of the angel. And I can only destroy it at the moment if he taps it out, which I don't think he's going to do. And he can do that every turn, so we just trade life all the way down. Hmm, problem. Problem, problem, problem. So I'm just going to do the one attacker because it can fly over with no blocker. And I gain two life. And I probably don't want to destroy my own creature. You can see the you can see the Herald of Faith that's sort of bobbing and flowing in the air. That's because it has flying, so that's the the visual effect for a flying creature. And here we go. It's just taking control of the Herald, and it's now got haste, so it can attack straight away. And attacking creatures get plus two, plus zero until end of the turn. Oh, we're in big trouble. Big big trouble. Into life. He didn't attack with the crew. We could have destroyed it if he did, but he didn't. So I'll block one of these tokens here. Why has it not given them plus two, plus zero? Creatures, and they're attacking. Oh well. I'm not sure why that didn't get the boost then. Did you do it out of order? Or did you do it in my turn by mistake? I'm not sure. Anyway, my turn. So I have the Herald back, I'm on 12 life. We're really just gonna trade that Herald, is what's gonna happen. Um, but I do not wanna cast that, because then that's what he's gonna do. And the two 1-1 one, one creature tokens will stay on his side. I believe. So come over again. 
actually I should have attacked with both then because I doubt he would have blocked with that I doubt he would have blocked with that mm, my mistake all right 12 to 14 we pretty much know what's coming now take over the herald so we're if that's the trade that keeps happening we're effectively just taking two life off each other because you deal four damage and then gain two back and it's just trading oh okay <laughs> so we had enough mana to do it twice ah oh, dear wow 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 and there you go beaten nicely played All right. and see we just had to play one game for that so it's given us another pre-made box jungle secrets a blue green merfolk deck so we're going to claim that and then every day come back and play a game it'll give you a new box set and like i say after about five six days it just gives you the rest so you end up with access to all the box sets and all those cards do go into your collection so by the time you've gotten to that point um, you really do uh, have a good basis to build off so i'm just going to end the video there you've seen uh some pack opening you've seen how the wild cards work you've seen one game just to, to have a feel for the visual aspect of it and then in follow-up videos i think what i'll do is i like playing these constructed events so for 500 gold uh you take a pre-made deck in so one of those box sets will work just fine and then you, you just play until you accumulate either seven wins or three losses and you can see the reward you get here you need to get to four wins and three losses and you get all your 500 gold back and you get at least one rare and two uncommon cards and then up here each uncommon card reward can be upgraded to a rare or mythic there's a 15 percent chance but i think if you click no i lie i thought that percentage could go up for the more wins you got but I'm wrong just the type of cards you get goes up so yeah, I like to play those uh, I might just take a pre-made uh, maybe that merfolk one we just uh, opened up or got access to and just take it through one of those tournaments and just play until there's seven wins or three losses and uh, we might do that over time just to try out a lot of the base decks uh, see what decks opponents are playing and uh, just see which card combinations we like. All right, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.